Beloved in Christ, we like to thank you for joining us in our study of God's holy and divine word and understanding the Father's heart ministries. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Beloved, we are living in trying, difficult times. And the devil is attacking marriages, relationships that God has uh, put together with uh, with children and families and creating all type of destruction beloved but beloved in the name of Jesus Christ if there is a time that we are going to have to stand boldly on the Word of God and believe God's Word it is now because you know what beloved the things that I'm hearing in the spirit the things that I am seeing take place not only in the lives of others, but in my own personal life. I can say to you today that Satan has pulled out all stops and is doing his very best in order to destroy everything that seems to be stabilized in the Lord. Beloved, I don't know if you know this, but the devil hates you. The devil hates your family. The devil hates your wife. He hates your husband. He hates everyone that has an established relationship with the Lord. And beloved, we are going to have to stand boldly in these times. We're going to have to pray for one another. We're going to have to fast for one another. We're going to have to believe what God's word says and let God be the center of our beliefs. The center of our thinking and our focus, beloved. We got to throw away the books we've been reading. We got to start focusing on the Word of God. What does the Word say? Not what someone wrote about the Word. What did the Word say? How should we stand in the Word of God? How we ought to be confident in the Word of God? Beloved, it has come to that day and that time. If we are going to survive this great onslaught of Satan. Beloved, as I said before, he doesn't love you. He's never loved you. He is a deceptive, demonic, fallen creature of the Spirit that will lead and guide the minds of people to eternal damnation. Beloved, but we need not be one of those that he deceives. We can allow the day star to rise up on the inside of us. And beloved, you know, no matter all the knowledge we think that we have, all that we think we can receive, we have to understand that Satan is a subtle demonic spirit that will do his very best and never give up in trying to destroy a person's life. Beloved, but we have God's Word planted in our hearts and we have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us. So, beloved, we can Say hallelujah. We can praise God. We can glorify God. We can say that we serve an almighty God. Because beloved, that's whom we serve. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we praise you this day. Father God, we glorify you. Father God, we know that Satan has come to steal, to kill, and destroy and many people, even your children, are ignorant to his devices. Father God, I pray that you would open their minds. That they will be able to see, Father God, with spiritual eyes. They will be able to hear with spiritual ears, Lord God. And to recognize and know that the enemy goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But Lord God, your word said that if we stand boldly and we stand confidently, that that devil 
will not be able to overtake us. Lord God, you told us what it takes, Father God, to continue to stand and not fall. Satan will try to draw us through temptation to fall. But Lord God, we know that we can trust you. We can believe in your holy and divine word, Father God, and to direct our steps, Father. And we thank you and we praise you for it, Lord God. We pray that you open our eyes to your word, Father, this day in the name of Jesus of the living Christ. Dear beloved, there is a sure voice of prophecy from heaven that you and I can follow. We can be confident that our God is who he said he is. We can be confident because of the eyewitnesses who saw, glory be to God, Jesus when he came back and he returned. The world doesn't have to believe it. The world doesn't have to acknowledge it. You and I are called to acknowledge it. And to understand it. If it wasn't for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, beloved, we would have no hope. But we have hope because God gives us hope. And that hope comes through Jesus the Christ. Beloved, the Word of God says in 2 Peter, the first chapter, a beginning at the 17th verse. It reads, For he received from God, for Jesus received from God, the Father, honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Beloved, I can trust in Jesus. I can trust in the Father because he is well pleased uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a prophecy from heaven. That is from the voice from heaven. When Jesus and the disciples stood on uh, the mount, look what the word of God says. You don't have to go there. I'm going to read that to you. Uh, these are the words. While he yet spoke, Talking about Jesus. Behold, a bright, bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were greatly afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. This is found in Matthew the 17th chapter, the 5th and the 6th and 7th verse. Beloved, what Peter was writing here is what he had experienced with the Lord Jesus Christ at that time on the Mount of Transfiguration. So Peter was telling not from what he had heard somebody say, but he was talking from the experience of actually seeing and hearing the voice. He saw the bright light, they all did, and then he heard the voice from heaven that said, In my Son I am well pleased. Beloved, that is powerful. That means the Father was pleased with what Jesus was saying and what Jesus was doing. But yet it went against everything that the religious folks were doing at that time. And we living in a time of great religiosity which is deception. Because many people believe that they are saved, that they know the Lord, and they really don't. Because you see, in the process of knowing the Lord, Satan always brings in imposters. 
And when I talk about imposters, beloved, I'm not talking simply about individuals. I'm talking about the spirit of imposter. Because you see, that's what happened to an individual when they take on so-called the likeness of God and they really are ungodly on the inside. There are people who come out to you and say, well, I thought that that person was a child of God. But that person has all the attributes of the devil. But yet they go to church on Sunday. Yet they so-called give to the church. And they do alms. And they give to the poor. And it seems like they are okay. But beloved, a sure word of prophecy from heaven is hearing what Jesus said, acknowledging that the Father is well pleased with him. And beloved, I can be pleased and satisfied with what Jesus said has done. Someone said they are, or wrote the other day, said, you know what, I, I, I don't follow Jesus, but I follow the Father. He's lying to himself. Jesus said, follow me. Because I hear the Father, and I do what the Father say do. Well, how can you say you follow the Father and you don't follow Jesus? See, he has mis misconstrued the word, and by the word itself, is bring condemnation to his soul. Because he's not recognizing that he's not hearing the voice of prophecy. He's not hearing the voice of the Lord or the leading of the Holy Spirit. But he's actually using his own intellect to try to understand what God wants. Beloved, we cannot use our intellect. To try to determine what God wants. Or where he desires us to move or to do. It is only by the spirit of God. And that's why many never come to a full relationship with the Lord. Because they are relying upon their intellect. They're relying upon their pride. And they find themselves out of step with God. Because God is not about the intellect, beloved. He's about the spirit. If he was about the intellect, then he would have choose the smartest men that there were in order to follow him. He did not do that. He chose fishermen. He chose people whom the society might look down upon. And yet, he imbued them with the power of his spirit. And they became victorious. And beloved, this is what the Lord is calling us to, a victorious walking him. But as the word says, that the Lord God gave him honor and glory and said that he was well pleased. And this voice, 18 verse says, and this voice which came from heaven, we heard. Somebody didn't tell us about it. We heard it. I want you to understand that. I'm not simply a purveyor of news that I think I know about, but rather what I heard and what I saw. This is what I am giving to you. This is a sure sign of prophecy, a sure sign of God's voice in the earth. There be many will tell you, hear me, because I have the voice that God wants you to hear. Beloved, the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of you. And until you fully recognize that, you will never be able to fully be able to hear as God desire for you to hear. Because He wants you to hear with your spirit, not with your mind. Most people battle because they battle in their mind. But when we understand that it's a spiritual battle that is going on, then we have a total different understanding of what God expects from us. It's a spiritual battle, beloved. 
It is not physical. It's not one that you fight with spears and guns and machetes and all these things. It is a spiritual warfare. It is fought in the spirit, beloved. It is fault on your knees. It is fault in your fasting and your praying. This is what causes us to be able to hear God as he so desire for us to hear him. For the word says that, and we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Now, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Now, we heard that voice. There was an eyewitness to it. And it was more than me, Peter, who heard it. But we all heard it. We all saw the bright light. And I'm sharing with you in this writing that it is. But there is more of a sure word of prophecy that I want you to be aware of. So that way you won't just think, well, maybe they're making a mistake. Maybe they didn't really hear it. Maybe they didn't really see the bright light. Well, there is a sure sign of prophecy. And Peter goes on and writes, Whereunto you do well to take heed of it, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. You know when light comes in a dark place, everything changes, right? I mean, when a place is dark and all of a sudden light takes over it, then, beloved, it becomes bright and everything can be seen. And Paul, Peter writes, I want you to take heed of that. Until the day dawn, get this now, until the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. Beloved, when the day star arises in your heart, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit coming on the inside of you, and that's when you know He has risen on the inside of you, and you know that you are born again, and you know that you are alive in Christ. It's not because you're praying. It's not because you're reading the Bible. It's not because some preacher told you Say these words and you'll be saved. No, beloved, when the day star arises in your heart, then you know that's a sure sign of prophecy that God has invaded your life. That's the only way to truly know. That's why it seems like so many people are falling away. And why people will follow even men who say that they are a Christian. And you know the words that they speak, the actions that they have, that they're not Christian. They don't have none of the characteristics of a Christian other than the fact of the words that they're speaking from their mouths. Everything else says otherwise. But yet we believe them because this is what they said. And then we, in our mind, think that we're going to be able to hold God accountable to the fact that, well, God, you should have told us. He said he was a Christian. He said he was a preacher. He said he was a pastor. He said he was an evangelist. He said he cared about me. But did you, did you uh, search out the fruit to be sure of it? Did you search out the fruit? That's what really matters, dearly beloved. And you can be a fruit uh, surveyor because of the Holy Spirit of God that's living on the inside of you. When the day star arises in you, that's meaning Jesus Christ arising in you. When you know that you're born again, not because of what you spoke, not because of what some preacher said, beloved. I want you to surely get that understanding because many people have been deceived by that. They say if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart. And then they take that and they go with it and they say a little prayer and they believe that somehow that they are saved. And many of them walk away from that so-called manufactured salvation by man and begin to walk into the world again. They're walking in the world again because they were never saved in the first place, beloved. Not that the day star arrived in them. So Paul... Peter is saying to us today, don't go on even what I said. Don't go on what I wrote.
Don't go, don't go on what the disciples wrote or even said. Don't go even on that as a witness that Jesus Christ is real. But allow the day star, which is Jesus, to rise up in your heart. Which is the Holy Spirit rise up in you. And that way you will know that you're saved. And when someone comes to you and try to, uh, uh, <clears throat> to reject your salvation or to tell you that you're not saved, you're not concerning yourself with that because you know with a shadow of a doubt that the day star has arisen on the inside of you. Glory be to the living God. The day star has arisen in you. And as the word says, that is a sure. Take heed of it. Like a light that shined in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day star arises in your hearts. Glory be to the living God. Look what he goes on and write. Knowing this first. Get this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation or any origin of man. That's basically what he's writing now. This didn't come from man. The scriptures that God has provided us with didn't come from man. Man have, might have been used as a tool to pin it, but it didn't come from man. And this is another thing that Peter wanted us to know. Understand that. It didn't come from man because it is living. It is alive. It is the Spirit of God. And it is working on the inside of you. And it did not come from man. Man brought it through. But man is not the one that has come through. But it came directly from God. And beloved, when you know that, you are going to battle all your days with Satan. Because Satan does not want you to understand that. He does not want you to know that. He wants you to believe that somehow, because somebody else was a Christian, then you are now a Christian. Because your mama was a Christian, then you are a Christian. If your daddy was a Christian, then he's going to say a good word for you when he died and he goes in glory. Beloved, it doesn't work that way. It is an individual thing. And beloved, we will battle with demons for the rest of our days in order that we might get the things done that God wants us to do on this earth. And beloved, I pray that you never give up. That you never give up. You might fall. You might get bruised up. You might get discouraged. You might get to the point where you just want to give it all up. Because the devil is using people in order to get you to give up. To get you to think that being this believer is a struggle. And it can't be had in this day and this time. Well, beloved, they are a liar. And they are being used by the devil himself. You have to stand and have to stand even bolder than you've ever stood before. Because the devil will try to design you and get you to believe a lie about yourself. Because that is the way he operates. The word of God says he's a father of all lies. So he'll try to get you to the point where you don't understand that the day star has risen up on the inside of you. He will tell you that's fake. That was just emotions. That wasn't something that was real. Beloved, because he doesn't care about you. He doesn't love you. He's not concerned about you. He's not even concerned about the things of God at all. And many people are following his pernicious ways. And beloved, we have to be prepared and ready for it. And the only way you can battle this spirit is through prayer and fasting. There's no other way. There's no other way. Because this, this demon is just a devil that won't give up.
and he's using people and they don't even realize it at all. Beloved, the word of God says also in this final verse, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It didn't come by the will of man, but holy men of God speaking as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Beloved, what they spoke was by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so the Word of God is a sure prophecy from heaven that you and I can trust and we can believe. And beloved, it is life and it gives life. Satan doesn't want us to know that. He wants us to believe that we need to fight with carnal weapons. But beloved, with the Word of God, it is from God and not by the will of man. Amen? Beloved, we can trust God's word. Or we can believe God's word. Because God's word is truth above anything else. Amen. Beloved, I just thank the Lord for you. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you in a very powerful way. I, I pray that you will continue to uh, study his word even uh, when you're not studying with us. I believe that God wants to just uh, resurrect you from the inside. And I just thank God for you. And beloved, if you desire to inquire with us, you can at Evangelist Joseph A. Brown, Post Office Box 186, Youngsville, Louisiana, 70592. Beloved, may the Lord bless you. May our good Lord keep you. And may the day star continue to brighten your heart and your life. In Jesus' name, be blessed.